Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Start Your Business, Change Your Life podcast. As always, I'm now the owner of womenforchange.info, a platform where we uh, like to give tips um, and advice to help women start and grow their business online. This episode is all about e-commerce. Um, I had an, a listener question in uh, that states... I really want to start uh, an online business, but I have no idea where to start. Um, That's like a very big topic to cover, but I'm going to do my best to to break this down in the format that we normally do, you know, in around 10 to 15 minutes. I like to do this so that uh, you have, you know, some information that you can take and put into action without the podcast being too long that you feel all of your time is being taken up um, listening to the podcast. So I'll start by saying that, you know, an online business, and I'm going to be going really basic here because I don't like to take for granted all the time that people know, know terms um, and jargon and stuff like that. So an online business is called e-commerce and the uh, general definition of e-commerce are uh, transactions, commercial transactions conducted electronic, electronically on the internet. Um, so yeah, that just basically explains um, an online business, an online retail business, sorry. Um, there are some very interesting stats about e-commerce um, for, from 2018, well, it's review in 2017, but they just came out in January 2018. And I'll put a link to uh, this source on the blog post that you could find at womenforchange.info forward slash EP24. So uh, I'll quickly run through these stats. Some of the interesting ones are the e commerce sales growth remains strong so it is a if you are interested in starting an e-commerce business it's a good idea too because the sales in e-commerce are growing they're not dropping so it's a good idea to get into it um by the end of 2017 it says that e-commerce sales increased by 13 percent over that of 2016 um it's looking to continue to increase and it will be up by 17% by 2022. This, uh, These are American stats. So it says 100, uh, they kind of did a survey on 100 Americans with internet access. And out of 100, 51, uh, I guess it's, yeah, 51 prefer to shop online. 80 have made an online purchase in the last 30 days. And 96 had made an online purchase at some point in time. So that's getting to be, you know, I mean, we don't know who the selection are, but you can just kind of get a a glimpse, you know, on e-commerce is getting to be the way of the land. And as I look outside my window, (coughs) it's March 1st, 2017, and it's snowing in the UK. And so... Uh, yeah, a little bit of online shopping <laughs> is going to be, is feeling good right about now because who is trying to go out in hideous snow? I digress. Um, it does unfortunately state that brick and mortar, which is what they call like physical retail stores, continues to fall, um, continues to crumble. On the big side, you know, you hear of big chains, Going into administration, bankruptcy, uh, lots of people losing jobs. It's it's not a good thing. It doesn't feel good and it affects lots of people. Uh, but we do have to recognise there is a shift going on. Um, it doesn't just affect the bigger companies. It also affects smaller businesses too. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's one of the not-so-nice knock-on effects. But <clears throat> it's definitely worth mentioning. Uh, the other stat is that online research is so important to consumer decision making. Um, oftentimes, lots of people will get be happy that they're getting traffic to their website, but then get com- uh, frustrated and confused when 
it's not converting traffic. There's lots of different things that you can look at if it's not converting, but it's also important to bear in mind that people do use online uh, websites to research, to compare, um, even comparing before they go to buy in store. I know that's a big thing for like luxury item purchases. Um, <clears throat> so when you do launch your e-commerce business, take into consideration that not just in terms of looking at your stats and why customers aren't buying, but when you are building your site, remember that people like to um, research. So just think of that in mind. The other stat is that there is um, a rising demand for same day shipping. Thanks to Amazon, who obviously have all the resources in the world to provide a great service when it comes down to shipping because they have been working on their logistics forever. Um, so some of the ways that you can combat this is to join them. If you can't beat them, join them. Uh, having your products, your business on Amazon um, they have something called an FBA, which is their fulfillment center. So you can send the products into them and they'll ship it on your behalf and all of that stuff. That That's like a whole other podcast episode, but just to quickly go over that. And it's also uh, good to bear in mind that even if you can't offer same day shipping, which a lot of, the, of us can't, unless you're really... Um, your business is very, very local, like within the city local. Um, but it's it's important to consider that shipping times at least are important. So the faster the delivery, the better. So if you can offer at least two to three days, you know, so just bear that in mind. Um, the other important stat is mobile e-commerce pays off. There's a stat recently that um, the recent kind of Black Friday, that whole kind of time was the biggest ever for mobile e-commerce in 2017. It's just growing. Like more and more people are shopping um, on mobile. A survey from 2015 showed that customers spend almost 60% of their online shopping time on mobile devices. That's 2015. Uh, that's nearly three, well, it is three years ago, depending on when this was done. Uh, a lot has changed in, a lot has changed in three years. Um, I'd probably say that I'd go with like 80%, if not more now. So what you need to bear in mind for your business is that you need to have a, a website that is e-com, is, sorry, is mobile friendly that people can shop on your website from their mobile at ease. Um, another interesting stat is that voice control devices are taking over with Amazon's Echo, um, Alexa and Google, Siri and things like that. So when people are searching now, they're searching through voice, which is diff somewhat different than through text. That weighs heavily on SEO, how people are finding your website now. So when you are writing your descriptions, doing your titles, you kind of have to bear in mind, think how people would say what they're looking for so that they're able to find your website uh, in a nutshell. Um, so they were some stats about what's fresh and what's popping in 2018 for e-commerce. But what I'm going to go into is more of uh, what the listener was really trying to ask about, which is um, where to start when you do want to have an e-commerce business, but you just simply have no idea. Um, so from my point of view and what I usually do uh, in thinking about working with a client when they are starting a business or if I'm, you know, starting a new online um, business venture is firstly, you have to decide what you want to sell. Um, maybe it's something that you personally create so you know it straight away. Maybe you just want to start an online e-commerce business but you don't really know what it is that you want to sell 
so that's just the first step deciding in what you want to sell um the second step is research 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 you have to research what you want to sell you have to research your target audience the demand is there a high enough demand for it is the market too um is the market just too overwhelmed i can't think of the word that i'm really trying to use but saturated that's the word is the market too saturated um if it is too saturated but you still want to do it how will you uh make your product different from what other people are offering do you offer customization can you really niche down even more than what you're thinking about um research is key and it's pivotal pivotal you can't just jump in if you just jump in without spending a lot of time doing research then I really think you're gonna uh, regret it when you go when you you know when you've already launched the next step I would take is to plan out your process uh, thinking about where you're going to source your materials from uh, if you're making things from scratch, the logistics of, of getting everything, making everything, the time it's going to take you to do that. Or if you um, are going to be offering uh, products, where are you sourcing the actual products from? Uh, how long is it going to take you to get here, uh, get to where you are? Is it international? Um, is there going to be extra charges, customs, charges involved? Uh, are you getting it from within your country? So maybe it's a little easier. Um, and you've also got to think about the costing. Um, you know, if you're buying things at the minimum order level, things are going to be more expensive. But if you're buying it more, then you've got the benefit of economies of scale. So you've really, going back to the research point, you've really got, got to do the research to uh, figure out all your costings um, and everything. In that planning out the process, really what this is, is going to be the business plan. Um, some people kind of shy away from a business plan and it kind of seems a little bit um, boring, systematic, blah. But it really does help because what, what happens is that you, people that don't end up doing a business plan and just kind of tumble in their way through, you're always going to get to a point where you feel like, damn it, I should have. Like I wish I had kind of plan to help me navigate through. Um, the business plan isn't static. It, it can always be updated and it can always be changed. And it doesn't have to always be like a big, you know, as, as long as a big thick book. Like just do something so that you have some kind of plan. Work through uh, the different steps of the marketing plan because you are, you are really going to need it. Um, and the third step for the just the initial idea of where do I begin with starting an e-commerce um, business is the real initial step, such as like think about what do, what you want the business name to be. Research if anybody else has it. Is there a trademark on it already? Do that research. Then purchase the, the domain name. Think about uh, your website. Are you, are you crafty enough to be able to use um a build it yourself you could use woocommerce by wordpress you can use shopify which is basically drag and drop there's big commerce um squarespace i believe you can use that too there's lots of different options if you feel that you can do it or if you want to you know if you're if you want to take it to the next level and you feel like that's just not me um start doing your research on web designers and my um my biggest being running a, an online web design and marketing agency the biggest uh one of the biggest ways i get clients is actually quite a frustrating way it's when um they've already dealt with somebody and maybe they've had a bad experience their website is like a quarter way done or halfway done but it's been taken forever um so what I would suggest to you is to speak with friends, speak with family, colleagues, and see if anybody has any good referrals for for web developers. Because um, yeah, you want to find a good one. 
and somebody that has good uh, feedback and reviews. Going back to the basics again, you want to create your email account so that you're ready to create all your social media accounts and your branding for that. Um, within that, you do also have to think about your logo. Um, and are you crafty enough to, to use some of the free platforms like Canva and some of the others to create your own logo? Or are you going to invest in having a graphic designer create your logo? Are you going to start small and start with what you've got? And then as you grow scale, you know, you really have to think about how you want to attack this before you go out and do it. So there is a lot of thinking involved, a lot of planning, a lot of research, but it's going to be worthwhile uh, for when you do launch. So they are, uh, those are my quick tips and my advice on how you would go about starting an e-commerce store if you have no idea about how to do so. And thanks again for joining me for this week's episode and I look forward to being with you again soon.